right, I'm gonna talk today about control design. So consider this feedback configuration. G is the plant transfer function that is you model through using an, for example, order and differential equation, then transfer to the Laplace domain. And here K multiplied by GC is the controller. So when we design control, we would like to achieve system stability, some acceptable transients without oscillations, most of the time, and a desired level of settling time, and of course, uh, minimizing the steady state error. And control design here is all about adding poles and zeros to your controller transfer function, GC. Um, as is being said, there are common types of or structures for GC. The, uh, one of the most common structure is the P compensator. P stands for proportional. Here, GC is just one, so you are only selecting the gain K. And the name proportional is coming from, so if you look at the command that you would like to follow, and the output, so this error between command and output, you are just multiplying it by gain K, so it becomes the proportional. So control action is proportional to your error. Other structure is proportional and derivative. Remember, S is acting like a derivative in the uh, Laplace domain. So with PD compensator, you are choosing A and gain K. And another one is lead. In lead compensator, you have S plus Z divided by S plus B type of a structure. You are adding a zero and the pole to your forward loop transfer function. And for lead, P is greater than Z. So P and lead, they are responsible for improving stability, transients, and settling time. They won't do anything to minimize your steady state error. And other type of controllers is PI and LEC. PI and LEC can improve the steady state error. Um, PI has this structure S plus B divided by S. You are choosing B in addition to gain K. I will do an example. And lead, a lag compensator is very similar to the lead compensator, but Z is greater than P. Now, if P compensator will give you a stability desired level of uh, transients and settling time, use it. You don't need to go with PD or lead. So always try P compensator first. If it doesn't work, try PD and lead. And when you design control, first improve stability, transients, or settling time. First achieve this. Then improve state, state error by using these two controllers. How you can do that? For example, let's say first I am using PD to improve stability and transients and settling time, so on and so forth. I am choosing A and gain K using root locus. Then at the PI portion, so you have PID. I am going to do a PID design immediately, but as this being said, first you can design lead, then lag, then you can have a, here instead of PD, you can have a lead, lag type of a structure. And you can combine PD and lag, lead and PI, and how you combine, just multiply them with each other. All right, so based on these common types, let's do an example. Consider this plant transfer function, one divided by S plus two, S plus eight. We, our objective is to achieve a stable closed loop system without oscillations, I don't want any oscillations, and I want a settling time, convergence time, to be 0.25 seconds. Now I try first the P compensator. So, Plants forward loop transfer functions, poles are located at minus two and minus eight, they are here. If you sketch the root locus, you are going to have this shape. If you haven't watched, or if you would like to learn about how to sketch root locus in my channel, you can refer to those videos. Uh, watch them first to understand fully how we uh, sketch these root locus diagrams. And now basically, when gain is zero, we are one closed loop is located at minus eight, other one is minus two. As we increase them further, they meet here, and one goes up, one goes down. Now, since our objective is to achieve uh, a closed loop system which is stable and no oscillations, when closed loop poles are located here and there, system will do oscillations. So I would like to stay on the real axis or close to the real axis. 
So I can achieve stability, I can achieve no oscillations, but achieving a settling time of 0.25 seconds is impossible with the P compensator because, for example, if you look at the um, settling time when these poles are located at minus 5 before they break out, we are using the settling time formula Ts equals to 4 divided by the point of interest here is minus 5 so we have 0.8 seconds and no matter what you choose you know um, your settling time will be trapped on this region and you cannot improve your settling time from 0.8 level to 0.25 seconds with P compensator although you achieve stability and no oscillations so I am moving since P compensator won't buy this. I am moving to the more advanced controller PT compensator. Again, um, D mentions for the derivative uh, refers to the derivative. Now, once you add PD S plus A, in addition to plant poles you are getting a zero from the forward loop transfer function because now your forward loop transfer function also has S plus A, right? Now we are looking at S plus A type of a structure multiplied by this plant. So forward loop includes this zero in addition to these poles. When you sketch the uh, root locus, but before we do that, I would like to mention a very important statement here. We generally, I cannot say this all the time, but we generally place the zero of the PD compensator or the pole and zero of the lead compensator to the left of the plant poles and zeros. Plant may have more than uh, two or three you know, poles and zeros. You are going to place them to this side for PD or lead compensator to be effective. And PI and leg, we place them close to the imaginary axis. So this is the common distinction, you know, difference between these two controllers and these two controllers. If you want to improve transient stability and settling time, you would like to put them to the left, to this side. Unlike this, these plants and poles will get close to the imaginary axis. All right, moving forward, this was an important statement that you should uh, keep in mind. Um, now, this region won't buy us a settling time, so if the gain is close to zero or like some small number, you will, your closed loop pulse will be trapped on this region and basically 4 divided by this formula won't buy you settling time. But if you look at here, if we place minus A to this side as I just mentioned for with the PD compensator, then you can take these branches to the left. That's why we are putting this to this side of the plant poles and zeros. In this case, we just have two poles. So we pull these closed loop poles to left. Now, for example, if you would like to achieve a stable closed loop system, first of all, for all gains, for all values of gain k, closed loop system is stable for this system. If we want no oscillations, we would like to stay on this region. And for example, you can use this point, you know, you want this point, let's say star, you know, let's say your settling time will be 4 divided by this star, you want 0.25 seconds. And then if you want this point to satisfy your um, settling time, then this point becomes minus 16 if you solve for this equation. Now, the reason I choose that point, I know that um, on this point, basically, I am on the real axis, so I don't expect oscillations in the closed loop system. I satisfy this requirement, and um, it gives me a settling time of 0.25 seconds, and the closed loop system is stable, so I can hit all these three design requirements. All right, so, Basically, now, we want to place minus A to this unique location, we need to quantify that location, such that your root locus passes through minus 60. If you look at, uh, basically, the rules that I explained how to sketch root locus, 
basically we are going to use gain equation k minus 1 over gcg in this case if you plug gc and g here we have minus s plus 2 s plus 8 divided by s plus a um, this break in point satisfies the local minimum on this real interval so i am taking dk with respect to its time derivative setting it to zero since we are trying to find the minimum and again more details on how to sketch is on the other video i am just focusing on the control design right now so basically this gives us minus 2a sigma plus 5 plus sigma to the power of 2 minus 16 equals to 0 sigma is here nothing but minus 16 in order not to write minus 16 over and over i just call it sigma so if you plug sigma here and solve this equation you are going to get a equals to 10.909 and basically i am using this uh, equation and setting to 0 and find solving for a so in other words if your a is 10.909 so this point is minus 10.909, then you basically uh, achieve the structure of the root locus. If you choose A to be 10.909, your root locus exactly passes through minus 16 for some gain K. Now we need to find this gain K. I am now going back to this equation, right? Gain equation. Now, instead of S, I am inserting minus 16. And now A, I am inserting 10.909, and basically it gives me, once you solve this, you are going to get 21.99. So now, your, basically, your PD compensator becomes, right here, 21.99 multiplied by S plus 10.909. This is your compensator that achieves stability without oscillations because you are at this point when gain is right 21.99 and it gives a desired settling time now if you plot this on MATLAB here k is 21.99 a is 10.909 this is the close-up system response i am simulating this with MATLAB with, for this plant i am applying a reference signal of one okay and my plant converges to somewhere between 1 and 0.9. I could not be able to achieve perfect tracking. I have some state state error. If you would like to minimize or get rid of, in the, for this example, this state state error, you need to add, you know, in addition to this, you need to add your PI, proportional integral controller. And basically here, if you add, and I think this is simple, if you choose, for example, B to be 0.5, you are going to have this blue response. Here I am using the same gain, 21.99, A, 10.99, only B is 0.5. Now you can fine tune, so you choose B to be 1.5. If you do that, you are going to achieve much nicer response that is denoted by this black line. Now, if you look at what's going on here, right, this is a PI. Let me put my imaginary axis a little bit here. Now, with PI added, we have on the forward loop transfer function 1s coming from here and minus p. So basically, we have this is minus p and 0. This is coming from the PI part. And as I just mentioned, so we add PI and leg generally somewhere close to the imaginary axis and PD and lead to the this side of the plant poles and zeros. Now, for small values of B, your root locus won't change much, okay? But of course, if you choose B larger than minus two, your root locus will will start to change more and more which is okay you can do that but if this requires re this may require recalculation of gain k maybe a on a ballpark you may want to play with these numbers if you would like to on a ballpark preserve this root locus shape you know b should be small enough and as i mentioned in the simulation you can try 0 0.5 0 0.1 1.5 here up to 2 
um, um, to see how it works and um, that's pretty much it. So I would like to wrap up, right, I covered the PID in root locus. Um, you can also do uh, this exercise with lead compensator. You add basically to this side, you can add leg to this side with leg. But Z needs to be greater than P to minimize the steady state error. For this example, if you try lag, you are not going to get perfect tracking. You are not going to get zero state, state error. With PI added to the PD, for this example, you can get um, perfect tracking. Now, as this being said, right, I mean, so this compensator, I mentioned these two compensators responsible for improving stability, transients, and settling time. I mentioned you need to add to this side and PI and leg needs to be close to the imaginary axis. This is um, um, commonly how we do, but there are interesting examples that you may want to think out of the box, okay? So I would like to give two examples and then uh, end this video. Um, the first one is uh, an interesting one. Actually, both of them interesting. Let's say your g of s is s minus 1 divided by s. In this case, right, you have this pole and 1, 0. So since this 0 is on the right half plane, it is called non-minimum phase 0. So if you look at here, if you use P compensator only, your, your gain K, gain infinity. For all values of gain K, your system, your closed-up system is unstable. Now, but how can we do the design? First of all, if you would like to only use a PD compensator, um, root locus, in this case, number of zeros will be larger than poles. It will be interesting. but it won't do anything good. Instead, I would like to break this branch. So if you insert, a, for example, a lead compensator, right? If you insert a lead compensator here, minus P minus Z, so it won't do anything to your system. So we choose GC to be S plus Z, S plus P. Since I mentioned P needs to be greater than Z, I needed to place P to here, but one, one of my closed-up posts will be located here, the other one will be here. So closed-up system will be unstable for all values of gain K. So I need to break this branch. For this reason, for this reason, I am going to do this. So this is coming from the plant one and now I am placing um, Z to here and P to here in this case in this unconventional case that we don't follow the uh, rule on uh, lead that we, I mentioned it needs to be to the right to the left of the plan I need to break this branch so this is kind of an uh, interesting example. Now you can have a shape looking like this and k equals to infinity, k equals to infinity, k equals to zero, k equals to zero. You know, you can play with this p and you can achieve no oscillations for some small amount of, uh, so small number of gain k. And this is how you handle this system. This is an interesting system. You have a non-minimum phase zero, so you need to break this branch by choosing your lead compensator out of the box without following the general guidelines I just explained. And by the way, these general guidelines uh, most of the time works, but not all of the time. That's why I would like to cover these uh, interesting examples. Other interesting example is Let's say you have a G of S, which is 1 divided by S plus 1 to the power of 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 at 1. So this, um, this is what I meant by minus 1. Okay. In this case, with, uh, with P compensator only, right, 
So your root locus will look like this, this. So for all values of gain k, basically closed up system will be unstable. Let me get rid of this. Now, now can you stabilize this with one p compensator? The answer will be no. One p d compensator. The answer will be no. But instead, I would like to try GC equals to S plus A, S plus B, S plus C, minus B, minus C. I am just roughly sketching the general root locus for different controller types. In this case, basically, root locus will exist here, two points, two points. So basically, you will have a root locus like this. and. A root locus like this. For large values of gain k, you will be at these locations, and one closed loop pole will go here, and k equals to zero, you are here. So basically, by increasing gain k, by using three cascaded, if you wish, PD compensators, you can take these pole branches to the left to achieve close up system stability if you choose your gain k large enough, no oscillations. And by playing with minus A, minus B, minus C in MATLAB or Simulink, you know, you can achieve faster response. So these two examples are out of the box. So some interesting cases that um, I want you to think like this. Okay, there are some common controller types, right? PD or lead, PI or lag. There is a common statement like PD will always improve stability, transient, settling time. Yes, but not all the time. For this example, PD is not enough. So, and the general guidelines, like the example that, that I just erased, we need to place these poles and zeros to the this side of the plant. They need to be at the image, close to the image axis. These general guidelines usually works, but not all the time. So you need to remember always, control design is all about adding poles and zeros. And yes, Know these contr common controller types, use them, but in general, think out of the box, you know, and I want you to think like how I can add poles and zeros to, br to bring root locus branches to the left to achieve close-up system stability. If you don't want oscillations, you would like to stay close to the real axis. And to achieve faster transients, you need to move poles to this side. So. I tried to cover a lot of things in this short video. If you have any questions, leave a comment, let me know. If you want more examples, I can also do more examples. And let me know again, we can go from there.